ago or a few months or years, mashallah, they used to be your best friends, mashallah, upon the manhaj. Now they're doing some crazy things out there. Well, you still love them because you share the same color? It's not about the color of the country, is the aqidah, is the manhaj. And everyone is to be hated according to his level. You hate the kuffar because of their kuffar and disbelief. You hate uh, the mushrikeen because of the shirk, not because of their colors. And you hate ahlul bid'ah wa dalal hizbiyah because of that. But if someone repents, a mushrik that became a Muslim, well, like, no, 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 I hate you a long time ago. You're done, brother. But I'm a Muslim now. Yeah, I don't care. I don't care what you're talking about. The same thing. Someone is upon innovation, hizbiyah, khawarij, madri, sofia, but Allah guide them to manhaj salaf what are you going to do now? Oh, no, man. He's a Hizbi. He, to me, as far as I'm concerned, he's still a Hizbi. What are you talking about? And that's not how we do things. We don't see things by emotions. That's what get people in trouble. Emotions. Or rallying with so-called, quote, quote, our people. You know, you're our people. You're your people, and our people, those are upon the haq. Regardless their colors, regardless their country of origins, these are our people. Anyone whom Allah guide him to the truth and keep him in the truth, and we ask Allah to, to guide us and keep us firm upon the truth. So you, you love upon moderation because you may have to hate somebody one day who deviates, apostate, and you hate them for that. And even when you hate someone, it doesn't give you the, the, the right to just treat them in any way. You feel like, no, you still have to learn how to deal with them. And that's another topic to itself. Salam <clears throat> alaikum. الحب والبغض ينبغي أن يكون في الله ولله لا لمصالح دنيوية أو لعادات همجية. إذا الشيخ says loving people or hating them, it should be for Allah and based on what Allah legislate for us, not upon savage, wicked ways that the people adopt for themselves you just hate the person because he's not from I don't know what doesn't matter a person is a nice upon aqidah why he's not one of us he's not rolling with us on what we are on us so he's not one of us yeah, you gotta hate him you know hate people like that he's with you and he's not with you ثم قال الشيخ نواقد الإسلام كثيرة ذكرها شيخ الإسلام محمد عبد الوهاب في كتابه نواقد الإسلام ذكر عشرة منها وهي أخطرها نعم الشيخ he says as for نواقد الإسلام are many many are the نواقد الإسلام things that notify one is Islam as we mentioned earlier the book الحمد لله of شيخ الإسلام شيخ محمد عبد الوهاب رحمه الله إمام المجدد he has a book called نواقد الإسلام the nullifiers of Islam Things that nullify one's Islam, meaning a person is not Muslim anymore. Even though they have a Muslim name, they live amongst Muslims, but they're not Muslims anymore. And that's how dangerous it is. And alhamdulillah, that book is available in English, and the, trans the, the explanation of some of the mashayikh is available in English as well. From them, Sheikh Salah al-Fawzani himself, he has explained that book. نعم الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر شهد الله إله إلا شهد الله إله إلا الله شهد أن محمد رسول
Nam. So Alhamdulillah, that book is important. You can find it, read it, study it. Alhamdulillah. From those ten, uh, he said, Sheikh Fawzan, he said, he mentioned ten because there is many of them. But why he mentioned ten, he says, because they were the most dangerous ones. مِنْهَا الْإِعْرَادُ عَنْ دِينِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى لَا يَتَعَلَّمُهُ وَلَا يَعْمَلُ بِهِ And from them, look, from the things that nullify one's Islam, a person give his back to the deen of Allah. Don't want to learn it and don't want to act upon it. Look how serious is this. Person, he's just Muslim like that. Don't want to learn anything. Classes are going on, books are available. Fatawa al-ulama, look at this modern technology, alhamdulillah. Classes are uploaded, you got the, the Spreaker, you got the Skype, you got this, you got that, CDs, books, classes. But person is like, ah, he doesn't have time. We have time for what? Games and plays and playing around, yeah, he has all the time to read the book of Allah, to attend the gatherings like this in this masjid, alhamdulillah. Masajid are built upon the sunnah, like, alhamdulillah, masjid ibn Abbas, alhamdulillah, in this area. Then, got to find some time and come and learn. Not learning the deen takes person out of Islam, because how a person is going to practice something if he doesn't know what it is? Especially those who they are called, encouraged, come to the class, learn, read this book, attend. They show no concern. The Shaykh mentioned the Dalil, statement of Allah in Surah Al-Sajda, verse 22. مِمَّن ذُكِّرَ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِ ثُمَّ أَعْرَضَ عَنْهَا إِنَّا مِنَ الْمُجْرِمِينَ مُنْتَقِمُونَ And who does more wrong than he who is reminded of the ayats of his Lord? Then he turns aside therefrom. Verily we shall exact retribution from the mujrimun, from the criminals. It's very serious, Ikhwan. This should incite us to learn and to be serious about learning the deen, to attend the classes, alhamdulillah, to find some time and learn. And if you have any opportunity to learn, you take advantage of that opportunity. Once again, as our noble Mashayikh, they mention, the best way to learn is at the hand of the ulama, by sitting in their lessons. We, what we do here, alhamdulillah, is we learn together. Me and you, we're learning from the work of the ulama. Okay, that's what we do. This is what we can. Okay, don't listen to some the ignorant people that says, if there is no alim in your area, don't learn. He said, what, stay ignorant? No, there is other means, alhamdulillah. If there is no alim in the area, but there is a student of knowledge, someone, mashallah, who he reads from the book of the ulama, he, he, he's not claiming to be mufti or to be alim and big shot. It's like brothers. Until this is the case. We don't have a alim amongst us. Let us, we read, alhamdulillah, the books of the ulama. And whatever we don't understand, we're going to write it down, call one of the ulama to make it clear to us, or one of the students of the ulama. Yes, the ulama, they mention, yes, you can do that. So the best thing is to, to sit with the ulama. For example, the, the, the youth, the men, who, mashallah, they can attend the universities, one of the universities in Medina or Mecca, they try your best to do that. Families who can move to, for example, Egypt with Sheikh Raslan, for instance, is a beautiful program over there. Then you, you, you start asking about it and make preparations. And take your family. Especially, it's very cheap over there. It's very cheap. And you cannot go to university, you cannot go to Egypt or Saudi or any place to learn. Then make sure you be close to a masjid that is upon sunnah, a masjid that where are the imam or whoever is teaching, they have respect for the ulama, not like someone who tell you he doesn't have to listen to this alim or the other alim. He thinks he's a big shot himself now. 
is like a, I don't have to listen to Sheikh Rabia, for example, or Sheikh Ubaid. Why you don't have to listen, Yaqi? Why? Who are you? You're one of them? One of the ulama? Now you be with the people who humble themselves. Not the people who whenever there is a fitna you find they are the first one riding that wave of the fitna. And don't be fooled by why oh, he memorized Quran. Well, he's good in Arabic. Khawarij, they memorized Quran. What are you talking about? Khawarij. I'm not saying that these people are Khawarij. I'm just a shay'u bi shay'i yudkar. Now, there's a, now he has PhD. For example, Umaysan. Abdurrahman Umaysan. It's unbelievable. People, they're like, no, we're not going to listen to you until Sheikh Rabia says something. Sheikh Rabia says something, they're like, no, they, nah. He's still our, one, one, of our, one of us. What you, what, how you see things? No respect for the ulama. They just take from the ulama what goes with their desires. They used to say, no, 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 no. Abu Muhammad, he's just lying to Umaysan. Hassan Somali, Musa Richardson, all of them. They hate him. They hate us. Huh? We listen to Sheikh Rabia. All right. Even we told them, we told them that's what the Sheikh Rabia said. They didn't believe us. They said, we need a, a recording. Finally, the recording came out. So what happened? Still, you think they said, oh, alhamdulillah, brother Umaysan. Listen, man. Salaam we go with the ulama, brother. Uh, we, 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 mashallah, we had respect for you. We used to attend your class, classes. Now, hey, 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 your issue with the ulama. Go fix that problem and we're okay. Not like just like, oh, I don't know, Sheikh Rabi, maybe they didn't tell him the truth. They didn't tell him the whole story. What are you talking about? See, that's the problem. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that disease. Of Talawan, just looking for what goes with, they want it. Okay? So it's very important, Yahwan, especially now, like people, they claim Salafiyah, but they don't want a lot of things. Before, he used to see, like, oh, that's Ikhwani Masjid, you're not going there. Sufi Masjid, alhamdulillah, I'm not going. Now there are people, like, oppose the Manhaj of Salaf and the Ulama, and then they still say, no, we are the one that you have to be with. Look, we, mashallah, we just, alhamdulillah, we, we're not looking for, for position, we're not looking for fame. Yes, I say, we would do ulama. No, 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 what about you? What's your opinion? I have no opinions. I share with you, brothers, what Sheikh Rabia said, and Sheikh Fawzan, Sheikh Bin Baz, Sheikh Uthaymin, Sheikh Muqbil, Sheikh Ubaid. You like it? Alhamdulillah. You don't? That's your problem, not mine. That's not my problem. Well, we cannot sit with you. Don't sit. It's okay. You're under no obligation to sit in the classes that I'm learning with you. Well, what do you say? Why? Some of them they even say, hey, we went and learned over there and get, get a degree for, for us to tell you what the sheikh said. We have to tell you what. A'udhu billah. Jahl. Ignorance, ikhwan. We ask Allah SWT to keep us firm upon this path. Ameen. Likewise, Ikhwan, we learn in this, these dangers of these things so that we can be aware of this ourselves and also we can pay attention because it may be somebody from our family members that's struggling with this. You may find somebody in your family members don't pray. They say they're Muslim, but they don't pray. They just don't pray, period. Grown up men, grown up women, don't pray. Don't just say, oh, it's okay. No, it's not. They sick. That's a, this, the sickness. If somebody is live with you and they very sick, man, and somebody come to visit and say, "That brother is blood, man. Look at him. He's sick. Oh no, no, he's okay. He's okay. Nobody gonna be said, No, he's not okay, man. Take him to the doctor. This man need treatment. But salat, no problem." That's the real disease. Person is not praying. Person is not learning the deen. They don't know anything about their Lord who created them and fashioned them in a base form. And they're like, no, it's okay, it's okay. As long as I'll know. It's like some people, they think that as long as the husband.